All right, so getting on to the build. We got the ProLine Pro MT. So we did the unboxing earlier this week, and now we're finally going to get uh, onto the build. So I'm going to get everything out <laughs> and try to clean up the work area as much as possible. So the things that we don't need will be thrown to the side here. All right, body, get rid of that. Shocks, that's only later. <clears throat> So suggestion, this is an easy build, but regardless, if at all possible, stick to only opening the bags you need. So bag A, I'm going to start with that. So here we're going to have uh, the bumper, there's a little push plate that goes across, and the lower skid plate. So I'm going to get that lined up here, a couple screws, I'm going to get a couple started, and I'm going to finish this up off camera to speed that up. So everything in the manual very well described. You can't miss it. All right, so now we have the bulkhead and the shock towers. So two screws is going to secure that. And these are the longer countersunk screws. And again, that's the main reason why if you stick to opening only the bags you're working on, you save yourself a lot of headache because you're not going to have 20 different screws sitting around here. So. These were much longer than the rest, so they stood out in the in the instructions. Okay, done and done with that. Now we're gonna mount our earlier piece together, which is the skid plate and bumper. So we have four countersunk screws underneath. We're just gonna throw two in there, mock it up. And parts bag B. And this here will be the uh, cross member piece that holds on the body post. So all right, first, we're going to start off with the shock mounting. So we have a button head screw that goes through and through, plastic spacer, and then a nut on the other end just to keep that tidied. We have to take it off when we install the shocks, but for now, so we don't lose anything. And here's that cross member piece I was talking about. That screws up top on the shock towers. And then from there, the body posts just slide down in. The shorter ones in the front here. So again, I'm just going to mock it up with the two screws here. Then I'm going to put the uh, grub screw in the body post or set screw. That's what's going to allow us to use these caps instead of uh, body pins. It's the first for me. Hopefully that holds up. All right. So now we're going to go with our upper links. As you, well, I'll let you guys know, I should, I could have let it slide, but those links go behind the shock tower, not in front. <laughs> so I'll fix that up off camera afterwards. Okay, now for the A arm, I'm going to slide the brace up front, put the screw back in here, and then that's just going to slide right through the bulkhead. And we have a nut on the end of that to lock everything in. So now A-arms are on. Time to work on our steering. So first things first here. To break everything free from the parts tree. I'm going to install some bearing in the uh, steering knuckles. One on both sides. Then we have the uh, stub axle that goes through. Drive pin the hex and a little grub screw or set screw in there we're done so rinse lather repeat for the other side <laughs> so here we have the uprights that's going to mount directly into the uh, lower a arm screw goes through and through there and a nut on the other side to hold it now it's hard to see my hands are in the way we're going to get the uh, upper link in there same thing for the other side and then we have the nut in the back and now we're going to install the steering steering knuckle should I say we have a uh, another screw that goes through and through all the way to the top because we're going into the aluminum this piece I put a little bit of thread lock into that so it doesn't vibrate itself out I don't like that part was hard to line up we got it done all right so do the same on the other side and we're ready to mount that to the front of the chassis. 
So underneath there we have three uh, countersunk screws. I'm just going to get one in there so we can line it up. And we're going to get the screws up on top to go on that, uh, I call it the push plate. It gives you a little bit of give on the bumper, whatever you guys want to call that. <laughs> it's not the shock tower. All right, so we got two of those in there. That's all locked up, so we're clean to go. Start working on the rear. So for the rear, just going to screw in our shock tower. And we have our uh, links already mounted on there. Now we're going to do the body posts. So as we did for the front, very similar to screws, put that into place. And now we're on to our, uh, put the axles on. So this side was easy to do. Line it up with the axle itself and put the, uh, I guess it's a set screw, but only has threads on the top of it. The rest of it's a drive pin, I guess you'd call that. So here you have to take the, uh, the trans cover off to be able to reach. There's no way, no angle I could get that in. So trans is off, or trans cover is off. Line up our axles and just uh, thread that through and through. All right, so that's done. Now onto the uh, lower A arm. Just as we did up front, we have that long screw that goes all the way through. And then a nut on the other end, no spacers or anything to lock that up. Everything is nice and snug, no uh, no slop or play there. And now uh, we have the rear hub carrier and get the axles lined up and get our pin through and through and a nut on the opposite side. And same thing here for the upper link. So I didn't follow any presets. I just have that right now into the middle position of the, uh, the hub carrier. So now I'm going to push that there to get all the slack out. Here we have two uh, spacers that go in, washers, then the drive pin, and then the hex. So that avoids any slop at all in the back. Sorry, there you go. And the set screw holds that uh, hex in place. So did the same on both sides. Now our shocks are built. All you have to do for these guys is add oil. Like I said earlier, you're going to have to take that nut off. I just put that there as a placeholder. Snug that up. And now for the bottom, there's uh, four spots. I went to the second outer spot. And a button head screw. It's going to line ourselves up. Same for the front. Remember, front shock a little bit shorter than the rear. And here I had a hard time trying to get that ball end to line up, but we finally got that there. So, we went through it quick. This wasn't a very complicated build. But here we have it, all nice and completed. The money and the parts are where they belong. Shocks, stiff chassis. Those hub carriers are plastic, but they are beefy. That inner bearing is gigantic. Uh, steel axles, so those shouldn't break. The trans looks uh, bulletproof. And uh, you get these trenchers mounted here. So all in all, like I was mentioning on the unboxing, this here is going to be uh, the go-to bashing rig. Trying to figure out what I'm going to use as a power plant. Thinking maybe going to go with a Castle SCT. Not sure. I want to go with something big anyways. Maybe something new. I don't know. Maybe a fusion system. Uh, it'd be nice to try something different, but we'll see. Whatever's priced right at the hobby store is probably what's coming home. <laughs> All right. We're just going to finish up here with that rear tire. And then get the body on there so you guys get a final look. Pretty excited to see how everything is going to mount up. I've never used the, I don't even know what that mounting system's called, but ultimately, no body pins. It's a little screw caps that's going to hold everything together. All right, I'm going to get the other side done and we'll be back at the body. All right. So, there is the completed four tires. And I'll finish it off with the uh, Sentinel body. Looks very nice. And like I mentioned in the unboxing, that body is super thick. So 
It's going to take a beating for sure. So everything lined up with those uh, pre, uh, well not pre holes, but little dimples on the body there to show you where to use the reamer. So everything's nice. And those caps just screw on nice and easy. There's an O-ring in there to keep it from backing off. So it's not as quick as body clips, but body clips don't usually last in the bassing <laughs> session. You end up finding them uh, a couple weeks later uh, down the street. All right. So we're done. Looks good. Those shocks stand out. You see the aluminum. I'm a big proponent of aluminum on my rigs. <laughs> so I'm really like, digging the look. I'm loving all that aluminum. So, guys, thanks for watching. Please thumbs up and subscribe.